So the third module has to do with swaps and loans. So a swap is just an exchange uh, of one token for another token. We'll talk about collateralized loans, which we've already talked about a little bit. Uh, and then my favorite, uh, the flash loans, which I've mentioned a number of times, and it must be a little mysterious to you, but uh, we'll cover it in uh, this module. So as the third part. So let's, uh, let's start with swaps and uh, begin with centralized uh, exchange. Okay, so this is a course in decentralized finance, but nevertheless, there's a lot of stuff going on in centralized finance that we need to be aware of. And when I talk about uh, centralized exchange, I'm talking about centralized exchange of decentralized uh, tokens. Okay, so the so-called CDFI, C-E-D-E-F-I. So, um, swap. What is a swap? Basically an exchange, one token for another. And uh, there's many different ways to do this, but the most popular today to do this is with a centralized exchange. For example, Coinbase or Coinbase Pro. Um, and there's many other exchanges. So there's hundreds of exchanges. And what's interesting with these centralized exchanges, in contrast to uh, the usual centralized exchange where the New York Stock Exchange, you decide to list on that exchange. And that's where you would trade uh, IBM, for example. But within this world of decentralized tokens, the same token can be traded on hundreds of different exchanges. So, uh, so again, uh, one option is centralized, and this is just um, an example of some of the more popular uh, tokens, and this is just the regular Coinbase screen that you could actually uh, buy um, using Coinbase. But for those that are trading, you would use something like Coinbase Pro. So Coinbase is a US uh, fully regulated uh, exchange. And indeed, Coinbase is a public uh, company now. So stock is traded um, and exchanged on centralized exchange uh, for Coinbase. So this is, um, this is the, what it actually looks like in terms of Coinbase Pro. And uh, you can see on the far right, you've got um, the previous transactions, and then you've got basically the bid and the ask. So there are people that are willing to buy, um, and those are in green on the left, and obviously wanna buy at a low price. And this actually shows all of the uh, different amounts that uh, people are willing uh, to buy at the cheapest uh, price. And then on the right, uh, those that are willing to sell and uh, they want uh, like a higher price, obviously. So that's why they're on the right-hand side and in red. And then there's a matching uh, in the middle and there's often a spread uh, between the two. The exchange actually makes money, the centralized exchange makes money uh, in that they earn a spread and there's also a trading fee that they would earn. And that depends upon the particular exchange. But this is just an example of a centralized uh, exchange. So one issue here is that there are so many exchanges that you need to be careful. So, so many of you will join the word world of DeFi uh, and uh, you will potentially use decentralized exchange as we will go through in this course. But many of you will also use a centralized exchange to deal with the DeFi. So one issue is that there could be a much different price for a crypto depending upon the exchange that you actually look at. And this is uh, a, a screenshot from last year where you could see a very large difference between 
uh, different exchanges for buying, let's say, uh, Bitcoin. So again, this is something that is different than what we're used to, uh, because if you go to the NYSE, there's one price for a share of IBM. Here, we've got hundreds of prices. So um, there are many incentives for some of these centralized exchanges to exaggerate volume. So if they seem like they're big, then people will basically think, oh, well, this is a popular exchange, I should go there. Okay, and they might attract uh, initial coin offerings or initial exchange offerings. And the more business you do, uh, the more money that you would actually uh, make. So it turns out that you need to be aware because uh, on most of these exchanges, the volume is fake. And it turns out it's really easy to fake volume in this space. Uh, indeed, think of it as, and I've already kind of mentioned this, that I could easily transfer my coin from one wallet to another wallet that I own and then go back and forth and back and forth. I still have the same amount of token, but I've created a lot of volume. So you need to be aware and there are certain things that you should uh, look for. So this is just the same shot that I showed you uh, before uh, with the previous trades on the right. We've got the order book. So that is the, the amounts and the prices that, uh, that people are willing to buy and, and sell at. And that graph in the middle where, where the green and the red meet, um, that is uh, where the trading actually takes uh, place. So uh, so what are we looking for um, in terms of an exchange that's a real exchange? Well, kind of an obvious thing is if you use something that's fully regulated uh, by the U.S. government, um, the odds are that it is not a fake uh, exchange. Okay, so uh, I think that's that's fairly clear, but there's various things that you can uh, look for. Um, and I will actually go through some slides and to show you some red flags in terms of what the order book looks like, what the spreads look like, and you know, simple things like round numbers. So for example, people put orders in for, let's say one ether, two ether. Um, it's unusual you put an order in to buy like 2.05647 uh, ether. So again, there's some basic things that you can do in terms of forensics uh, to figure out if an exchange is real uh, or not. So uh, there's, again, many uh, different things that uh, you could look at in terms of what do the previous trades look like, uh, what is kind of the correlation amongst exchanges that you've got a strong prior belief are, uh, are real exchanges. And, and I've already mentioned the, the round numbers. So uh, the history, again, is going to be uh, really important in terms of what does the trading volume look like. Uh, we'll take a look at that and, and forensics. And, um, and what about uh, some examples here? So uh, this is an example of, of an exchange that uh, is likely uh, a fake exchange. So if you look at the actual uh, trades, um, you can see that they're almost immediately offsetting because it's a buy and a sell of the same amount and just keeps on going like that. And it doesn't make any sense. Um, also, the spread on this exchange is, is way higher than an exchange uh, like um, like Coinbase. And this is an interesting one because this exchange claims to have five times the volume uh, of, uh, of Coinbase Pro or, or even more. Um, but the actual, when you actually look at the history, it looks very uh, suspicious. So this is another exchange and notice that the trading only occurs during a certain period. And that doesn't make any sense. So uh, again, 
this is the, the hours of zero trading. That's got to be uh, a red flag. Uh, and you could compare that to other exchanges where it doesn't look uh, like that. So uh, again, this is another exchange. It's got roughly the same volume uh, as Coinbase Pro, and the volume is, is constant, which doesn't make any sense. So volume does have some you know, seasonality within the day or the week, but this is all basically the same volume. So you look at that and you say, no. Uh, this can't be real. It's likely uh, fake. Um, so uh, trade sizes. So on the top, are it looks very reasonable. Notice that most of the volume is with kind of smaller numbers, so smaller trades, which is exactly what we'd expect. So the volume should be greater for smaller um, trades, and then for the bigger trades, it gets lower. Now, notice those spikes on the top two, uh, where we've got Coinbase and Kraken. Um, well, those spikes are things like one, two, three, so the round numbers. And then the two exchanges on the bottom, which have very large volume, uh, it looks completely different. So again, you need to be careful here uh, that these are, are red flags that this uh, volume uh, just doesn't make any sense. So the top two are very intuitive, good economic foundation. The bottom uh, doesn't make uh, any sense. So um, this is just volume um, over an extended period of uh, time. And notice the top two are actually pretty correlated. If you look at the correlation of the volume, uh, it kind of makes sense. And then look at the bottom two. It doesn't make any sense. Right, so it has, no, it has no correlation with the exchanges that, uh, like, like, um, like Kraken or, or Coinbase or whoever you want to look at. Um, there's essentially no uh, correlation. Um, and then the spreads. So uh, if we look at the spreads here on the top, you've got a couple of exchanges that uh, seem quite reasonable in terms of uh, the spreads. It does vary through time. But then look at the bottom two. Uh, the one um, you know, on the left at the bottom especially just doesn't make any sense. And notice where I'm pointing to like the zero is. So, so basically, these are, are volatile high spreads that don't uh, make any sense. So it's pretty easy to do the forensics here. So you don't need to hire a forensics firm uh, to identify like uh, a problem. And, and some people have estimated that if you look at the total volume of trading uh, in, that's reported in the world across all these exchanges, that less than 5% of the volume is real. Okay, so again, this is something uh, to be aware of. Uh, this is a way to get people to use your centralized exchange. Running an exchange is incredibly profitable. Okay, so uh, we saw from the IPO of Coinbase that this is an extremely profitable business. Okay, and I want to emphasize again that this is centralized uh, finance. So what these exchanges like Coinbase or Kraken they're, or Binance, they're, they're no different than the exchange like the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. It's the same basic mechanism, the same screens you see, the same um, structure of an order book uh, is, is available. So, and they're profitable. So what does that mean when they're profitable? Well, they're making money because you, as a user, are basically paying them. So some of the value, um, your value is being transferred to the centralized exchange. So it, it's really uh, important here to put that in context. And this is the reason that I'm going through the centralized exchanges, to put into context what 
uh, decentralized exchange actually does. And decentralized exchange is going to be different because we're not trading with a broker. We're trading with an algorithm. And the algorithm doesn't care if you're buying or selling.